Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. I'll be reading out the New Living Translation Bible, the New Living Translation Bible. I just thought, I said, Lord, this is going to be a communion night, and we're going to have fun just lingering and worshiping God. Psalm 133, verses 1 and 3. And, you know, I just, I just heard from the Lord, this is so appropriate for this evening. Are you there yet? Are you there yet? All right. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Verse 2. For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head, that ran down his beard and onto the robe or border of his robe. Verse 3. Harmony is a refreshing, is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord pronounced his blessing even life everlasting. That's, I, I want you to keep that in mind. That is so heavy. This particular psalm. In fact, Lord, we thank you. I just pray right now. I'm just so excited about tonight, God. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of just overflowing too, and I get all my thoughts together. But Lord, we thank you. We, we come just to worship you and to receive your word, to be fed. We need fresh manna tonight. We need fresh manna tonight. We need to see new things about your word. There's, you, you are just multifaceted in who you are, Jesus. So tonight, just speak to us. And I pray, Father, that you'll just open our eyes and ears to receive your word with uh, thanksgiving and with, uh, uh, with a, a word that will literally uh, transform our thinking about who you are as our God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This particular psalm is known as a song of degrees of David. It's a really short psalm, as you can see, but, uh, but it beautifully, it's so beautiful. This one just speaks of what is called divine, I call it divine unity, divine unity. You see, unity in the Spirit cannot come about unless the Holy Spirit performs it and makes it happen. Now, we can, we can try to have unity in our lives by ourselves, try to make peace, but how do you know, you know, look what's happening in, in the, the Far East right now with uh, the Palestinians in Jerusalem, there would be no peace until the Prince of Peace shows up. Amen? This particular psalm has been called the psalm of brotherhood with the emphasis of genuine fellowship. This psalm speaks of pilgrims who have come to Jerusalem with family and friends. Coming together, they have a time of true agape uh, I'm going to say koinonia, fellowship with each other. I want you to know that these pilgrims came from all over the known world and had been suffering horrendous persecution because of unbelievers and the ungodly. What a joyful experience it must have been for them when their own people who worship came together in agreement to worship Yahweh. What a blessing. It's so beautiful. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than being in agreement with someone because of the word of God. Amos 3.3 3 says, how can two walk together unless they, what? Agree. Man, these three verses are, are awesome. Let's break them down. Verse 1. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. As uh, we as believers are to encourage, promote, pursue, make it happen. Keep unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. This is found in Ephesians 4, 3. Believers, we as believers are one with Jesus Christ. And that means that we can avoid divisions, and anything that might divide us as God's people. Amen? You know what? I'll tell you, there's so many different ideas out there. If you start to study theology, I, I, man, I can't even begin to tell you how complicated that is because of all the different beliefs. So I just found out one thing. I'm just going to believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that He died on the cross and rose again from the dead and forgave me my sins, and now I've received Him, and I've got eternal life. We've got a major on the majors. 
Forget the minor stuff. We must avoid divisions. In fact, I'll tell you where it starts. Right here. We get divided because we don't know the truth or sometimes, sometimes we don't know the Word of God. But when you come in agreement with God, your mind and your spirit will come in agreement with His thinking. Amen? We are one in Christ. Second verse, For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that poured over Aaron's head, that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. This is so beautiful. This verse refers to the time that Aaron, the brother of Moses, was, was anointed as a priest of Israel. What a... It must have been incredible to be there. They poured the oil over him, folks. They didn't, they didn't get this little bottle out like I have here and go, well, we want to just take care of you, you know. That guy got, they just poured it on. Reminds me of what the Holy Spirit does when we receive him. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, he pours all, he, that anointing goes all over you. <laughs> the anointing is on some people here tonight, by the way, and that's why you can't talk. That would include me. Jesus Christ is our high priest. It has been said that this verse reveals the fragrance, the fragrance of that oil. It, it was like a, a, a rose, a lovely rose fragrance. Isn't that beautiful? Man, it's just incredible. and makes me think of who Jesus is, the rose of shame. He smells so good. He's not wearing Aramis. <laughs> he's not wearing obsession. He has, he's made up his own fragrance. It's glorious. Sometimes, if, I, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, Sometimes you can be in a church and somebody goes, do you smell a fragrance in here, a sweet smell? Yeah, I've been there. It's so beautiful. You know what? Jesus is there. This fragrant, precious anointment was put on the priest to indicate that he was a priest unto the Lord. The priest, Aaron, was set apart for Yahweh to worship Him, to pray to Him on behalf of the people. Now, this is also a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ because now He's interceding for us as high priest. Isn't it great to know that sometimes we don't know? That in fact, we, don't, we might even feel like, oh, nobody's praying for me. Always remember, Jesus is always praying for you. Always, always, always. But we got to get it from here to here. And sometimes we got to get it from here to there. Oh... I, I don't like spiritual amnesia, man. We, we've got to have that. Uh, we've got to remember He is praying for us. Whatever you need, whoever, in fact, anything you need, He will meet that need. I am that I am. I am the provider. I am Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees, the God who knows, and the God who and give you everything you need. He's our provider. Jesus is not only our king, but he's our high priest. And we see in Psalm 45, verse 7, Psalm 45, verse 7, that he is anointed. And he is anointed, now listen to this. This is what's so cool about tonight. He was anointed with the oil of gladness. He was anointed with the oil of gladness. That's, you can feel the oil of gladness here tonight. Can you say amen to that? Yes. In Ezekiel 39, 29, we read, Neither, this is the Lord, Neither will I hide my face anymore from them. For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. Listen carefully. Ezekiel is speaking of a future day. And like that precious ointment that ran down Aaron's beard, God 
will profusely pour out his mighty spirit upon the people of Israel. The day is coming when God's chosen people will come to know their true Messiah. Jesus Christ, the true Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, will make himself known to the Jewish people, his people. But aren't we blessed, us Gentiles? <laughs> We've been grafted in. He has adopted us. Woo! Praise God. You haven't been left behind, folks. You haven't been left behind. Man, I get so excited about this because it would have been a drag to go to hell. That would have been awful. But out of the mercy of God, Jesus went to his people, but it wasn't the right time. So he says, I'm going to go to the Gentiles and I'm going to show them that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father but through me, Jesus Christ. Oh. As for the Gentiles, us, since that day of Pentecost, we have received salvation through Christ. We have been adopted into, listen, God's royal family. God's royal family. I need to say that again. God's royal family. Can you say that? God's royal family. I belong to that family. Amen. Plus, plus, not only are we a part of God's royal family, and we are royal priests of a chosen generation, but the Bible says that we now are priests for Christ. We are cooperating with Him. That's why prayer is so important. Sometimes you're not going to be able to change anything. You're not going to be able to make anything happen. But I'm telling you, you begin to pray in the Spirit. You begin to call out on God and He's going to hear you and He's going to meet that need. He's going to incline His ear. Oh, who is that talking to me now? Oh, I hear Nadine calling me. I'm going to answer it. I hear Alicia calling me. God heard you. He performed a miracle. Yes, he did. And now she's going to go. Her, your, 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 your land has been expanded. And now at least she got a brand new job. Praise. I just got to tell them. She had a new job. Her coastlines have been expanded. She's going to be a witness in this new place for Jesus Christ. God has a plan. Wherever we go, wherever your foot treads, that belongs to you. Wherever your foot treads, that belongs to you. You know what? I've gone all the way. My wife and I both have gone all the way to Bothell to see Eastside Foursquare. And a friend of ours invited us one time. And I, we, they invited us to come down and to help them out with the worship. And I was just so excited. And we went down there and, and we were going to help them in their worship seminar and, or, and the altar workers and all of that. Well, we decided after the class was over to go up on the stage there at Eastside Foursquare. And we decided just to worship. You know what happened five years later? I was on that stage playing with a worship band, wherever your foot treads, wherever your foot treads for Jesus Christ, it's your land. It's yours. Have you got that? To be a witness for Jesus Christ. To be a witness for Him. I get excited about that stuff. Christ is our great high priest. And here's our application. Since this is a biblical fact, I say a biblical fact, we should endeavor to keep the unity that the Spirit has created for us. Oh, I love peace. Anybody here love peace? Peace. Peace in your marriage. Peace at your job. Even if you're going through hard times, let this peace, which was in Christ Jesus, be in you. Now, the psalmist concludes by saying that, the, that, that as brethren together in unity, that we can experience something really wonderful. It's called harmony. When you first meet somebody, young, young men and young ladies, you'll notice that, every, that you agree on every single thing. That went, Oh, we have so much in common. And after you get married, I, there's going to be some difficulties. Because... It's not, you're going to learn what harmony truly means. Amen? Come on, guys. Give me a break. Ladies. 
Thank you, brother. Oh. I'll tell you, praise God for godly men and godly wives. And, and you know what? Now, and maybe we weren't in harmony then, but you will be <laughs> if you're following Jesus Christ. Harmony is so cool because it is refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon, or Hermon that, that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there, this is so incredible, and there the Lord hath pronounced His blessing, even life everlasting. I'll tell you, if you ever want to underline anything, there's a key here that He's saying. Harmony with our fellow believers brings refreshment, peace, and it pleases our Heavenly Father. That's why when disharmony comes in or division comes in, it does not bring pleasure to the heart of God. And we're going to keep the peace. <laughs> I love peace. Come on now, one way. One way. One way. That's our new, that's our new uh, uh, slogan around here from the old cavalry days. One way. My pastor Chuck did that to me when the last time I saw him, I'd been talking to him, met him in a parking lot. We were, he was driving this way, I was going that way. He just did this. I said, praise God. And so I said, <laughs> praise God. Oh, it's so good. Harmony brings refreshment. Harmony brings healing. Harmony brings sanity. Harmony brings a coming together and talking and working it out. Harmony is patient with each other. And when we come in that place of true fellowship, divine fellowship of God, He pronounces His blessing or blessings upon us. That, is, that to me is what I want. That's the reward of your coming together and keeping harmony, keeping harmony in the church, in your family. So we need to pray. We need to really pursue peace, peace. The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 22, that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow to it. That is so huge. There is a fella... Watchman Nee. I found this little book that my, my uncle had after he passed away and I had a little book and it was concerning the blessing of the Lord. I'm going to give you a, a real, just, just a, a gold nugget tonight, a gem. I want you to remember this, that if we do not ask God for that blessing, we could be doing everything right in, the, in our marriages, in our church, in our lives, in pursuit of ministry, but without that blessing... Without that blessing, it's not the same. Without that blessing, there is no life. There is no life in the church. There's no life in you. You know what I found out? When I found out, I could claim the blessing. I said, God, I want the blessing. I need it. Now, now show me what that looks like. Oh, the blessings of God will overtake you. I talked about getting, ordering a pizza on the Thursday night gang. I think it was, or the Willows, I think. We ordered a pizza and they made a mistake on it. My wife said, I want extra crust. And every time, we, I, I tell you, so she put it in the oven. She goes, whoa. I said, what's going on? The pizza had the biggest crust I've ever seen in my life. See, God supersizes everything. It was supersized. It was huge, massive. It's like somebody shot it with hormones or some pizza hormones. I don't know. It was supersized. I went over, I, I ministered to a guy, his name was Marty, and many of you have seen it on Facebook. I'm ministering, we've got people chasing Marty. Oh, the Holy Spirit comes to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comforted. Marty's going to get it. He's, oh, he's resisting, but resistance is your time. He's going to get it. I keep popping in. Hi. Am I, you know... I said, I love you, but, you know, he's going to get it. So after I witnessed to Marty, then I went over to Jack in the Box just to get a drink, just, and I got a drink, and, and the guy blessed me. The guy comes up to the guy. He's, he was having a meeting. He comes over. He says, oh, here's a cup. Here's a big, a super-sized drink. It's on me. I said, really? 
But what about the joy? What about the deliverances? What about healing? What about strength to believe God that He can do anything? That's the blessing. Oh, we need the blessing of the Lord. I'm going to close with these two scriptures. We need divine unity. And here's where we see it. Ephesians 4.3 and Ephesians 4.13. New Living Translation. Ephesians 4.3. Make, 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 make every, 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 every effort, effort, effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit. Listen, binding yourselves together with peace. Isn't that good? We got, in fact, we like to bind ourselves together with God. Say, God, I need a little love with flesh on it. Well, I'll just, somebody will, somebody will come to you, give you a big hug. Has anybody ever needed a hug in times of trouble? <laughs> And what do you do? You don't just give them like, you know, just a little. no, you bind yourself to that person. And I'll tell you, when I've gone through some tough times, my wife and I, we just look at each other and, and I go, I need a hug. When she's going through a hard time, I, I, you need a hug. Bind yourselves together with peace. Ephesians 4.13, this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature. We're going to grow up in the Lord, measuring up to the full and the complete standards of Christ. Isn't that good? That's good stuff. See, we got to keep reading the Word to remind ourselves of these things. The, I'll tell you, the Word of God, oh yeah, it'll correct you. Yeah, you'll be reconfigured. It's like going to the Holy Ghost and He's going to do a chiropractic job on you, on your thinking, on your mind. And then He's going to show you how God reacts and how God wants you to react in situations. Isn't it that good? Oh, so here's what I want to say. Let's rejoice in our fellowship with Christ, our Redeemer, our Justifier, our our mighty God, our all in all, and fellowship with each other. You know what? We're all that we have. <laughs> God loves you. He loves you. We love you. God's doing some awesome things. And that's my message. <laughs> Before we get uh, into communion, I just thought I'd share something quickly about that scripture, if I can get it over one sec. Small scriptures often are very, very powerful, aren't they? Ooh, praise the Lord. Psalm 133. And the Lord talks about the, the, at the beginning how good, how pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. God places a high priority on unity, doesn't he? High priority. Because the devil always wants to do what? divide and conquer. He uses this same method all the time on churches, on marriages, on people, because it's so successful. That's why it is so important not to let the enemy come in and divide us from our brothers and sisters, divide us from our church that God has planted us in. He is very sly. Ask for discernment when things come in to try to divide you and take you away from what God has placed you. It's so important, brothers and sisters. I can't tell you how important it is. It's the rock that we stand on. He places us in this important place, on this rock known as Jesus, 
and his love for unity. And at the bottom of this scripture, where it says, For there the Lord bestows his blessing and even life forevermore. In other translations, it says, For there the Lord commands the blessing and life evermore. I really like that translation. He commands. I command, as the Lord God says, life and blessing evermore. That is a high priority on unity, isn't it? It is indeed. And so my uh, exhortation to you tonight uh, with my husband's uh, exhortation is stay close to Jesus. Ask him to show you when the enemy is coming and trying to divide. Will you do that? I promise you, you'll have life evermore, as the Word of God says.